All right, guys. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little lab to help us find the speed of sound. Now, this is given some of the relationships that we've already learned. Okay, we've already learned that the speed of the speed of a wave is equal to its wavelength times its frequency. And so hopefully we're going to see that here when we do this lab. All right. So what we've got over here is a speaker. And when I push the green button on the speaker, it's going to start creating a wave. Okay, it's going to create a sound wave based off of the vibrations of the speaker here. Right now, I can actually turn off the sound. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's kind of annoying, but it's a pretty low frequency. Okay, I can also increase it. Right, so you can hear it. Now, I want you to notice something just by looking at it. Right, the waves are now thinner, right? Those black lines are closer together but the speed at which they move doesn't change, right? Watch when I move the frequency back down this way. The wave actually still moves along at the same speed as it did before. This is important, but this is what we're gonna see in the lab. This is really, really, really important because what happens is the speed of a wave is not determined by the wavelength of the frequency. The speed of a wave is determined by the medium through which it's passing. So as long as we keep the air the same that the sound is going through, then it should have the same speed. And this is one of the things I hope to show you in this lab. All right. So I'm going to actually turn off the sound. We don't need to listen to its frequency. All right. But I am going to pause it just for a second. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure the wavelength of the wave. And in fact, we're going to measure two waves just because it's always better to do a couple. And so I'm going to put my measuring tape. I'm going to put that first red plus. You see where my finger is? That's the first red plus there. I'm going to put it at the center of this black wave. And then I'm going to stretch the meter stick out, the measuring tape out, so that it's to the center of this black wave over here. All right. And I, uh, it is kind of a guess. I'm doing the best that I can and I get about 304.2. Now, remember what this is showing is the black here is going to be a compression and the white is the rarefaction, right? So you see it compressing rarefaction, right? That's what you're seeing is the compressions, the rarefactions of the molecules in the air as the sound wave passes through it on our, in our previous video on what is sound, all right? So what I've done is I've measured two waves here and it says it's about 304.2. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and type that in. So 304.2 centimeters for two weights. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to measure the period of five cycles. So I'm gonna start it up again. And when I start it up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch the vibration here of the speaker. You'll notice that every time it goes all the way to the left, I create a black spot. And then every time it goes to the right, it creates a white spot. And so just by watching the vibration of the speaker, I can get the period of its movement. And therefore, I know the period of the wave as well. All right. So I'm going to count five. And I'm going to count every time that extends as far as it can over to the left. Okay. So I'm going to start the timer ready now. So there's one cycle, two cycles, three cycles, four cycles, five. All right, so I got 22.73 milliseconds. So I'm gonna come back over here. Now notice that the units are a little bit different. That's because we're trying to measure sound in this app, but it's going to make sure that the values are correct so that it works. So I'm gonna go 22.73 milliseconds, all right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and do that for a couple of different uh, frequencies. So we're going to increase the frequency a little bit. We'll just kind of move it up there and we'll do the same thing that we did before. We'll pause it. We'll put this at the center of one of those black ones. But you know what? Let's just move it a little bit further. This will make it a little bit easier. Find the middle of the black there. We'll go to the middle of the black there. And so uh, we should actually make sure that it's been running for a little bit. There we go. So we got the middle of the black and hopefully about the middle of the black there which I got about 256, so we'll go 256. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the period, and I'm gonna start it up again, 
and go. One cycle, two cycles, three cycles, four cycles, five cycles, right there, 19.34. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pause the video because you don't need to keep watching this. So I'm gonna pause the video. We're gonna skip ahead to where we have seven sets of data, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take that data. I know there's only six, I said seven, but six data points. We'll take those six data points. We're gonna find the wavelength in meters. We're gonna find the period in seconds, which we can then turn into frequency. And then we're gonna graph the wavelength and the frequency together. We're gonna see what we get, all right? So uh, first I measured the wavelength of two waves. And so I need to take that value. And so to find the wavelength, I'm gonna take that value right there. The first thing I'm going to do is divide by two because that'll give me the wavelength of one wave because two waves was that long. But then I also, that'll still be in centimeters. And so I want to turn it into meters. So I'm going to divide by a hundred because there's a hundred centimeters in a meter. So when I do that, it should give me a wavelength in meters. And so I'm just going to tell it to copy all that. So it's going to do that. So the 156, it's going to take that 156, that A7, and it's going to divide it by two to get one wavelength and then divide by 100 to put it into meters. All right. We're going to do the same thing with period. So for the period, we want the period to come from this one right here from that 22.73. That was five cycles. So I'm going to divide by five. So that'll turn it into one cycle. So that's the period of one cycle. And then because it's in milliseconds, I want to turn that into seconds. I'm going to divide by a thousand. Right, and I'm gonna get a decimal number, but that makes sense because it took, according to our applet, it took 22.73 milliseconds to complete five cycles. So very short amount of time. Again, we'll go ahead and take this and we'll copy it down. Now from there, we can actually do frequency, right? Because the frequency is just one over the period when the period is in seconds. And so we do that, we just kind of copy that down and we tell it, okay, do the same thing. So we now have frequencies and we have wavelengths. So the next thing we wanna do is graph that. We're gonna do the frequency and the wavelength. We're gonna have wavelength on the x-axis and frequency on the y-axis. We're gonna say, okay, please insert a scatter plot for me. And then we say, why thank you for inserting a scatter plot for me. And what you see hopefully is that it's not linear it could be quadratic, but it looks more like an inverse graph, right? As it curves down this way, it seems like it's probably inverse, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to graph the inverse, right? Remember, we learned how to linearize at the beginning of the year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the x value. Now, the x value here is the wavelength. So I'm going to take the wavelength. I'm going to do one over the wavelength, okay? So we're going to insert a new column here, and this is going to be one over the wavelength, all right? Now, if I do that, and I do one over the wavelength, and I graph it, hopefully that is going to linearize my graph for me, okay? So I'm gonna keep this graph and we're gonna create a new one with one over the wavelength on the x-axis, frequency on the y-axis. Again, we're gonna go insert scatter plot for me, please. And look at that, we got a pretty nice little graph there. Now, this is all nice and good, it's fine, okay? We would hopefully have a linear graph there. So what that means is that on the x-axis, I have one over wavelength. On the y-axis, I have frequency. So if this is a straight line, then y equals mx plus b, right? On the y-axis, I have frequency. So essentially, it's that the frequency is equal to m times x, which is one over the wavelength. and then plus B, all right? Now, if you look at this, it looks pretty like that line could go through zero. 
And so we're actually going to take off the y-intercept there. So we have the frequency equals the slope times one over the wavelength. Now, if you calculate, if you multiply, that's one over the wavelength. So if we multiply both sides by the wavelength, what do you end up with? Well, you end up with frequency times wavelength is equal to m. But we already know what frequency times wavelength is. We learned that in a previous video. We learned that frequency times wavelength is speed. So what that means is that the slope here should be the speed of my sound wave. So let's go ahead. We're going to go in here and we're going to say, well, will you please create a trend line for me that is linear? And I do want to force it to go through zero, zero. And I want you to show me the equation on the chart. And we say, okay. And there we go. We have y equals 333.38x. So the slope is 333.38, which means that the speed that we just got from our data is 333.3 meters per second. Now, in normal conditions, 25 degrees Celsius, normal pressures, things like that, the speed of sound is 335. 343 meters per second, which means we got pretty darn close in our lab to what we would consider the normal speed of sound to be. All right. So I want you to remember that we're going to consider from now on the speed of sound in air, just normal temperature air, 25 degrees Celsius, normal air is going to be 343 meters per second. And that will be the true, that will be true for any wavelength and frequency. Let me show you. Let's go ahead and do speed here, which is going to be in meters per second. And I want you to see it's not going to be exact because this is data. This is we made some estimates. We didn't necessarily measure perfectly every time. But if I multiply the wavelength times the frequency, I get approximately the same thing every time. 334, 330, 320, 338, 320. Those are all really, really close together. What I want you to get from this within error is that the speed doesn't change. By increasing the wavelength, it doesn't change the speed. By increasing the frequency, it doesn't change the speed. The speed is a constant due to the type of medium and the temperature of the medium and whatever the quantities, the properties of that medium are, that is what affects the speed of the sound, not the frequency or wavelength. All right. And that's going to be really important as we move forward is to recognize that all sound will move at the same speed unless you change the medium that it's going through. All right. So I hope that was kind of neat. I hope it reminded you of some of those things that we did before. If you got lost in some of the math in the middle, don't worry about it too much. The big thing here is we were measuring some wavelengths, the distance from one crest to the other. We were measuring some periods. From that, we were able to find wavelength and frequency. And from wavelength and frequency, we were able to show that more or less the speed is the same no matter what for any wavelength and any frequency. All right. So hope that was helpful. Go on to the next video. Let's chat a little bit more.